Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here and welcome back to this ongoing series of power moves where we're showing how to construct a 3D model of this horn. This might be something that you would use for a cosplay application. Maybe you would 3D print this prop or maybe you're just watching to learn some skills about lofting and surfacing and these are gonna be skills you're gonna use in your day-to-day -day SolidWorks activity. Regardless, I hope that you've enjoyed this series and I think that today is gonna be the final episode. So where we left off yesterday, we had constructed the loft. The loft stops a little bit short here up at the top, but it looks good other than that. And so now we are gonna take this surface and we're gonna add a fill surface up top here to create kind of a rounded off tip so we don't end up with a sharp point up at the top. Now, one thing that a lot of SolidWorks users ask me is what's the best way to change the color of your models? And I usually use one of two techniques. If I just wanna change the color, I'll just click this beach ball up here at the top, edit appearance, and then I will just click on the color that I want. So if I wanted that to be yellow, I would just click on the color that I want. If I want to change the actual appearance, the reflectivity, the shininess, then what I'll do is I'll go over here to the appearance pane and then I'll find the material that I want. So if I wanted this to be out of like a high gloss blue, well then I could double click here on this blue or a high gloss green, double click here on this green, and that will change the color of the entire model. So now that I've got the color that I want, let's focus on what's going on here on this tip. And we're gonna use a command called fill surface. Now the command fill surface is from the surfacing toolbar. It's here, it's called filled surface. And by default, what the fill surface command will do is basically lay a blanket or a sheet over top of the opening. So in this case, because this opening is just a circle that's cut planar, I'm gonna end up with a planar surface. If I hit the green check mark, you see that I just end up here now with a cap on that horn up at the top, just a flat cap on that horn. But if we edit that surface fill command, there's an option over here in the edge settings where you can control how that, that uh, transition to the fill surface is gonna take place. And what I mean by that is, if I change this option to tangent, what I'm gonna be saying to SolidWorks is that I want the newly created fill surface to have tangency to this existing surface here, to have tangency to this existing surface here, and that's gonna take place all the way around the entire fill surface. Now, we could utilize tangency or we could utilize a match curvature constraint. So basically what we're saying here is instead of it just being tangent, I actually want the curvature to match to these existing surfaces. For a model like this, you're really not gonna notice too much of a difference. It's gonna look very similar whether you use the tangency or curvature option, but sometimes it makes a pretty big difference, um, especially when you get into consumer product design and plastics design. So for this example, you could either use curvature or tangent. You can hit the green check mark and you can see here what the result of this model looks like. So now instead of this ending up at a sharp point or instead of it ending up flat, we have this nice curve here up at the top. And that is a good, easy way to create these kind of curved tips. The one problem we might have is that maybe now the tip is sticking out further than our original layout for that projected curve. And if that's the case, it's really not that big of a deal. We could just go back to our surface loft find our 3D path of the loft, and then adjust this number here, which is that segment of the uh, construction line. So we could maybe increase this instead of five, maybe if we bump that up to seven, you know, pull that down, maybe that's too far, maybe we'll bring that back to six. And there we go. Now we're pretty much perfectly in line with where that tip is. So that's kind of the nice thing about having converted that tip and giving it a dimension that is parametric, meaning we can change that dimension. So this thing is looking really good. The, the one thing at this point that you wanna note is that this is still a surface model. So if we go through and we hide some of this geometry, I'm gonna just click on these things and hide them, the planes, click on this plane here and hide it, click on this plane here and I'll hide it. I'll hide the, uh, the sketch of that point and I'll hide the, the uh, projected curve. If we hide all those things, what we can see here is that our horn, the horn itself is still a surface model. So if I bring up a section view and I pull the section view plane through, you can see that there's no thickness to this thing. There's no, there's no solid geometry. There's no mass, there's no volume. It's still surface geometry. So what we learn in my lecture on beginner surfacing for beginners, uh, I'll include a link down below to that. Uh, the beginner surfacing for beginners lecture, what we learn is that what we're trying to do is cap off all the openings of our surfaces 
and then knit those surfaces together to form a watertight surface. So to cap that off, we can once again use the fill surface command and we'll choose this edge here. And like I mentioned originally, this is just gonna lay a sheet over that surface. So when we hit the green check mark, we can see that now we just have a nice solid cap on the end of that surface. So now we can use what's called the knit surface command and we can choose to knit this surface body and this surface body and this surface body together, leaving us with one single surface body. And so this is kind of like doing a Boolean combine in the world of solids, but we're doing it with surfaces. So instead of having three separate surface bodies, now we just have one single surface body. It's still a surface body, which means that it's still going to be a, um, uh, it's still gonna be an open surface. It still has no thickness, no volume, but it is one continuous watertight surface body, which means that now we can launch the thicken command. And when we launch the thicken command, we can choose this one single solid or watertight surface body. And we can tell SolidWorks we wanna fill it all in with solid geometry, create solid from enclosed volume. So we hit the check mark there, we examine the results. And now when we look at this thing with the uh, section view, now we can see that this truly is a solid. It truly does have solid geometry on the inside. It has mass, it has volume. So that is the final step. I know I might've gone through those surfacing steps a little quick. If you need a refresher on surfacing, check out that live stream that I did, that lecture I did on beginner surfacing for beginners. But that brings us to a solid version of this horn, which means you could send it to your 3D printer, you could 3D print out this prop. Now, in reality, there may be one additional step, which would be to figure out what the curvature is of the helmet and then include that curvature down here at the bottom of that horn. But I think I will leave that step for another day. I think this is a nice way to kind of round out our series of power moves here. I hope that you learned a lot throughout this lecture. There were a lot of really cool tips and tricks. Let me know down in the comments, what was your favorite part about this power move series? What was a cool trick that you learned that you didn't know before? And of course, if you enjoyed this series, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for some more excellent power moves.